Hi. Uh, Catherine Tetcher. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. It's a Hi. pleasure to meet you. Nice. Amanda. Yeah, likewise, Amanda likewise. Yeah. I've been following you for a really long time, so I'm really excited to be here. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming. Where'd y'all come from? Of course, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. So how do you balance doing 100 plus deals a year and having a family and going forward with doing this for free? Well, the thing is, is yeah. I've been doing it for 20 years. Okay. Right? right. And so I built up the, the clientele that I don't have to go prospect and chase deals like you guys do. Right. So all the time you spend chasing deals and looking for deals and trying to market and do all this and that, I'm not doing any of that because my base is already there and they just call me when they get ready. So and so I, systems. Yeah, so I have all that time, I have all that time that you spend prospecting and stuff to spend time with the family and go build other businesses and do all that. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a 20 year process. So a lot of people are like, how do you, it's like Tasmanian Devil, you're just doing this, that, and the other. It's just crazy. How do you do all that stuff? And I'm like, well, how long have you been in business? And he's like, four years. And I'm like, well, there's the problem. You know, it took me 15 to get my real estate business where I wanted it to be, where I could branch out and do other things. So I did like 15 hours a day for 15 years to get all my systems in place. That's how I feel you know? like 24-7. Right, and that's how it's gonna feel until you get everything to where it's just running on autopilot, where you just got all the deals flowing in, falling in your lap. But until then, you just, you have to focus on real estate. You know, you can't do all the other stuff that I'm doing, you know, thinking, oh, well, he's doing it, I can do it. No, I did 15 years of putting all the systems in place and now I can afford the opportunity to go build other businesses and still chill with the family and stuff. Was this the plan? Mm -mm. When you sat down one day and said, I want to do real estate, did you do a business plan for a long term to get to this point? Or did you kind of build up and do the right habits along the way and eventually you said, you know what, I have the room to make this my empire? Yeah, no, it was just, I knew that I was going to be the best in the world at something, right? I That's know what awesome. it was going to be. Uh -huh. And I knew I was going to give back to people, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. So just one thing led to another, you know, and I just stayed focused. So it's you know? just a feeling that you chased. It never was necessary. Necess I would say never. Like it, the feeling is, is just get, just get a little better every day. Okay. Right. Just get a little better every day Absolutely. and not get upset when you don't reach your goals. Who cares about that? As long as you're still moving forward, it's going to happen. See, the thing is people have this misconception in your mind that it takes this much energy to, to create this result when really the amount of energy and time and effort it takes is like 50 or 100 or 1,000 times more than what they thought. And so when they do what they think needs to go into creating this result and that result doesn't happen and you're nowhere near it, then, they're, they, then they throw their hands up and give up, right? And so, but the, but the effort that it actually takes to create these big, huge results you want is so massive. And, but you think that this is how much effort you have to put in, but it's wrong. And so people, have these misconceptions about how much how much it really takes to do big things and so they give up and so you can't be upset about not hitting the goals you just have to keep saying okay well if it's not enough energy that's the universe telling me i just got to keep going and keep working and, and eventually you'll hit it you I know love that the universe is saying hey this is this is my message so would you say that that statement parallels with the concept that social media is, I don't want to say false, but that real estate kind of parallels with the idea that we're only posting our successes, therefore new agents, when they're getting into the business, they think it takes this much energy to be successful because other people have not posted their failures. No, I mean, it was like that before. People would make sales and they would do postcards saying just sold, you know, and oh, they would... fake. Huh? They're fake. What do you mean fake? Saying just sold postcards. You saying people are posting fake stuff on social media, Is saying they just yeah. sold? Well, you know, I don't. I'm not gonna assume anybody's lying about anything until I actually find out that they're actually lying. Um, you know, um, but you know, look, nobody needs to pay attention to anyone, right? Nobody, no, nobody needs to compare themselves to anybody or pay attention to anybody or anything. You just need to do you, right? So like, I don't, I never was on social media. I didn't start doing social media until I started coaching, right? And so that was in 2017. So I was selling 100 properties a year by 2014, 14, 15, 16. I, I wasn't even on social media. I, I didn't even look, I was not scrolling. I did not know what was going on. None of that stuff. I didn't even have an Instagram. I didn't even have, I mean, I had a Facebook profile. I never posted. Yeah, but I was so focused on just being the best real estate agent in the world that 
I didn't really care what anybody else was doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if you get caught up in what everybody else is doing, you know, you lost right there. You know what I mean? Because now you're comparing yourself to everybody else and really you're trying to be above everybody else, which means there's only one person that you're competing with and that's yourself. So I don't even look at anybody else because they're just average. <laughs> even like the people that are at the very top, even at the people at the very top, when you're looking at the people at the very top, that's just average because there's a lot of people at the top. And that's just average when it comes to greatness. That's just average because greatness is up here above the very top. You know, and so this is just average because there's people that are almost at the very top. So you got a below the very top and you got greatness. So the very top is average. I don't want to be average. So I'm not going to look and see what other people are doing. In an industry that requires networking and, oh my, in the way. Mm -hmm. In an industry that requires networking and befriending your co-agents, I suppose. Um, how do you maintain that level of I am the best and not coming With my co, arrogant? with other agents? Not coming across as arrogant and maybe putting off potential networking opportunities. Because I never, because I, I don't care about networking opportunities. MLS does all the networking I need to sell my properties. Okay. The buyers are going to see it on MLS and contact their agent or me and buy it. And what and, and what's going to happen? What's going to happen then? Now I have an interaction with that agent through the deal to show them how good I am. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. Okay. So sit home, do the work, not worry necessarily yeah. about how your ad looks, but worry about don't do what ads it says and then do what it says properly. Don't do ads. My little baby agent brain just broke. <laughs> Don't do ads. Right, because all your ads are trying to do what? What's the end result of an ad? Prospecting. Generating leads. And then what? What do you do with the lead when you get it? Follow the follow up? By what? Depends. You call them right then. Okay. So it all comes back to a conversation. So you're spending all this time and money on an ad just to have a conversation with a random person that responded to the ad. When you could have got the exact property owner you want to do business with for two cents, contact information, and just call them. Off MLS? No, off Red X. Red X. You can just yeah, pick, uh, you can just pick uh, any property owner you want for two cents. You pick the subdivision, boom, you get all the, all the contact information. Right. So it's a 10% so it's pickup rate. Okay, and then one out of two conversations is a great conversation. So we're at 40 cents per great conversation with the exact person you want to do business with. You pick the house, you pick the price point. So what's better than, than calling property owners to have a great conversation just to make a friend, not to sell them, just to make a friend, and then follow that up with a weekly email on the same day of the week forever, right? Nobody can tell me anything better than that on an efficiency, call spacious, effectiveness, productivity level, nothing. Nobody can say anything. I've asked hundreds of thousands of people, please tell me something better. And as soon as you do, I'll start talking about that. Do so you think the email is more effective than like text messages? You should do both. Email should be the foundation once a week on the same day of the week. Do it. You talking about bulk texting? Yes. Once a month right now until the market changes and then sprinkle social media on top. Just do it for fun. So social media is more of like a side generator. Side generator, just to build your brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you get leads through social media, call them, work them, do it. You're going to get leads from social media. You know, get them, put them in your database, get them getting the weekly email. And you create the weekly email every, month, every week, custom content. That's what separates you. You're giving them a little bit of your personality. You're not just saying, press your square foot up. You know, you're saying, press your square foot up, and here's what I think about it. Okay, adding that little personal touch so it doesn't yep. feel like a computer talking to somebody. That's right. Come here. Consumer. Come here. Come here. Yeah. She's like, there's some of future. Yep. Imagine. So, She's I have a question. Uh, you know the time that we are now? We're not supposed to turn on. We're not supposed to call. I'm not supposed to be here right now. I'm not supposed to do anything I'm doing. Okay. Cause that's I, what nobody I tells me what I'm going to do and I'm not going to do. I'm calling people to help them to see what I can do to help them today. There's no laws against calling people from a volunteer standpoint, doing community outreach to see what you can do to help them. But, uh, Sorry. But don't you have to disclose that you are a real estate agent? A hundred percent. How do you do that? By saying, hi, this is Ricky Caruth. I'm a local real estate agent. How are you today? No, he does. I mean, it's the I what, listen to all like, what do you mean? How do what do you mean? How do you do it? You tell him your yeah, yeah, you say your name, your company, yeah. and but ask then you disclose it, but you're not supposed to call them. It's okay to call them. It's okay. 
It's okay. Have you read the rules? No. Well, that's the first thing you should do if you're going to make it an excuse not to call mm -hmm. is read the rules to see if, in fact, you are breaking rules by calling, which you're not. Should I go deeper? Yeah. If you have a buyer, okay, if you have a buyer, you can call. Do you have any buyers right now that can't yeah. find a house? Yeah. Call the subdivisions. Totally legal. But I can call only the, the listing uh, houses? You can call all the houses in the subdivision. Oh, and and uh, for sale by owners. I was all the houses in the subdivision. What's a subdivision? Or a neighborhood, or oh, a sector, okay, okay. or a street, or whatever. You call all the owners, not just for sale by owners or listings. Now, when you say, the, do you read the rules, where do you read them? What rules are you talking about? What rules are you talking about? What rules are you saying? MLS says yeah. you can't cold call? We cannot call okay. That's what I was told by Right. So, so, so go to your MLS and find the, the rules of that or find on their website where they say that. If you can't find it, call them and say, where does it say this? I called them. They told me that I cannot do the IEM. Did you ask them what the fine's going to be? No. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Not. It's not going to be... I, I'm just... Uh, what happened is, you know, I, I got in trouble once because I usually don't knock on the house. Step over here. Do you mind if I got a picture of you? Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Do you mind taking a picture? Thank you. You know you trust me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, no, I'll, I'll leave in a minute. Okay. Yes, queen and king. Thank you. Thanks. Do you want one too? Do you want to do a Berkshire look? Yeah. Berkshire. What's, it, what's your drink? Ooh. What's your drink? Oh. <laughs> One, two, three. One more? One, two, three. Love that. Okay. After this, there's yeah, tons of pop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we love an iPhone 5. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you. Sick. Yeah, of course. You want one? Yes. Let me put this on, please. Don't <laughs> I need it to stay alive. Hold on. One, two, three. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else? Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Nice you. You're welcome. Nice to meet you guys, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see you guys in there. Billion hours uploaded to it.